Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to The Fragrant Bunker. Listen, I have a wonderful topic today. I'm dressed for the occasion, very red carpet ready. Why? Because I'm doing a selection of top 10 perfumes to wear on the red carpet. Now, as we know, depending on which part of the world you're in, in America in particular, you know, once a year there is award season. And award season is usually around January, February, sometimes even before that. And it, the culmination are the Oscars, the red carpet and the stars, whether they be women or men or something in between. They all want to smell good on the red carpet. It's not just about looking good. It's also about smelling the right way. Not necessarily good because not everybody's into that, but it's about delivering a full on look and the perfume also has to match. Now, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And uh, you can also join me on Patreon, Super Decob, all spelled together there for extra perks. Thank you to my patrons who have pledged. Actually, my patrons and my members from my main channel are watching right now as I'm filming this video live. So I'm reading the, the chats as we go along, you guys. You can try guessing. It's a fun game. Uh, and you guys are watching me later, uh, try to guess down below in the comment section as we go along. So listen, the red carpet has a lot of different meanings. I mean, it doesn't necessarily just have to be a red carpet for a movie premiere. It, it can be also theater. It can be an exhibition. You know, it can be a paintings, a photo exhibition. It can be, it can even be some weird political event, you know, that you're going to and you're getting photographed before you enter the dinner, the, the grand gala or gala, however you want to call it. Um, and um Trina says, impact is where it is. Yes, and I can tell you. So let's begin. I'm, I'm dressed for this perfume today, actually. Uh, I want to begin with the symbol of Hollywood. Seriously, so many stars and starlets have worn this fragrance um, since the 40s, really. And it's also a symbol of... Um, and and a lot of flankers, well, not flankers, a lot of uh, dupes were made of this one. And, and some stars even tried to make dupes of this one. And this one is also connected to film noir and to the Black Dahlia as well. And that would be, well, it can only be one perfume, really. Now, you've guessed it by now. It's Fraca by Robert Piguet. Okay. So, um, I can tell you. It's a tuberose heavy scent from the 40s. Uh, many, many, many stars have openly said that they wore this. Amongst them, you know, Madonna, Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> Jennifer Aniston, big star. <laughs> you know, so uh, Madonna even made a dupe for this one called Truth or Dare, her own perfume, which is now discontinued. And she wanted it to smell of fracas. It's another tuberose fragrance. But, mmm. Fraca is amazing. You wear this. Listen, a little story that to go with this. So uh, back in 2017, um, when David Lynch uh, brought back Twin Peaks, oh, those were the days. Twin Peaks season three, also called The Return. It was May 2017. They did the red carpet uh, for the first two episodes. So they aired the first two episodes Oh my gosh. Oh, the nostalgia. This makes me want to watch Twin Peaks all over again. And um, I remember, so I remember I was, um, I couldn't go to the red carpet because obviously I didn't have a ticket to, to go see it. And I didn't want to like just stand there, wave to the stars. I don't know. It, it felt, I, I felt a little bit embarrassed. I, now after, you know, after it all happened, I wish I actually went there. Uh, but uh, anyway, I was at home and I wore fracas. I was watching whatever I could find online about it. And I wore Fraca and I thought to myself, this is the vibe. This is their red carpet moment. Um, it, it just, it makes you feel deep, dark. It's a fingerprint magnet. It makes you feel deep, dark, mysterious, but glamorous at the same time. And it gives you that Hollywood glamour. Now, I know Hollywood glamour should, it's more 30s not really 40s, this thing came out in the 40s, but nevertheless, nevertheless, sweater weather. This is, the <laughs> oh my God, I love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it so much. Yeah, Debbie says, I miss those days, the Twin Peaks days. That was amazing. 
Okay, and Fraka is back, by the way, in a pure perfume form. Now, this is the Eau de Parfum, but uh, there's also an extra version available. I might have to snatch that one up. Now, the next one, my number number two. Okay, I've seen Goldie Hawn. Uh, it, I think it was her makeup artist or hairstylist uh, that posted on their Instagram like a video because kind of he's friends with Goldie Hawn. I mean, they've been like working together for a long time. You can see that they're like, that they really like each other. Goldie always dances with him. I forgot his name. But anyway, I was watching this one video that he shot of Goldie Hawn getting ready to go to an award ceremony. And it was either the Emmys, maybe it was even the Oscars. I don't know. But then so they were getting ready. She was going to go into the into the limo. He would go in another car and then they would meet at the event again because he would have to pep her up again for the red carpet. And so he's filming her or somebody's filming her. And her last touch before she left her house is captured on that video. And you know me, I love to know what the stars are wearing. I, I want to know what they love. And I saw in that moment that Goldie Hawn, this was literally just a couple of years ago, you guys. This was not, you know, this was like 20, 20, uh, before the whole lockdown situation. No, no, it was like after you could start going out. It was 2021, I believe, or 2022. But Goldie Hawn put on a cloud of this. Goldie Hawn wore Dior's Addict. The Eau de Parfum, okay? And let me tell you, this is intense. Okay, I still have half a bottle full. Let me tell you, she, ah, oh, so voluptuously, took the lid off, sprayed it on her hair, on her clothes. She, it, it all over herself. And I mean, this thing is intense, okay, addict. And I'm like, wow. She is going to smell like a queen when she arrives on that red carpet. So Goldie Hawn, a year or two ago, was wearing Addict. And if she's wearing this to the red carpet, you best believe you should too. I mean, I love Goldie Hawn. Ah. This one is a queen of the night vanilla resonacy deep addictive fragrance it's just so beautiful do you if you want to be magnetic on a red carpet you wear this because the trail of this is going to hit the photographers as well and you want the photographers to notice you your look but also your smell and you want everybody to be mesmerized by you that's addict. And the more, the better. And it's like Goldie Hawn knew that the distance that she had from the red carpet to the photographers, it's like she knew how much she needed to spray in order for them to smell her, even though they're, you know, anyway. Oh my gosh. By the way, serving Veronica Lake red carpet moment, serving um, um, Natalie Portman a, a black swan, what is it, moment, serving Julia Fox red carpet moment. I mean, we are, you know, we're there. We're there. So, uh, okay, the next one. I, I can tell you this. If you want to wear something to the red carpet that is opulent, um, juicy, thick materials, we're talking velvets, we're talking embroidery, we're talking moiré silks, we're talking old school Hollywood glamour where the, where the dress is like ginormous and then you have like a bust that's kind of very tight, the hair is sleeked up together and you're just all in that moment. Or if you want to go over top shoulder pads as well, if you're a guy. Well, or vice versa. The woman can wear the shoulder pad. The guy can wear the dress. Why not? Then I highly recommend a power beast from the 80s that can conquer any runway. We just had a Dior, but we have another Dior moment. And that would be Poison by Christian Dior. Now, I recommend 
the OG eau de toilette from the 80s. Get yourself a vintage because the current formula, eh, you know, the current formula of the eau de toilette is not, is not the best. I would not recommend the Esprit de Parfum for the red carpet. I would go for the eau de toilette. Oh, my God. Another tuberose. The dominant. You know what, girl? Can I just hold on? Let me let me feel my oats here for, for a moment here. OK. Let me just let me just let me let me. This is one of the first batches made from 1986, 1987. Um, Man, it aged like a good wine. This is the moment. I mean, this is the red carpet. Th this is the red carpet moment. You wear poison with that opulent dress in maybe a poison green color or a purple, a velvet and purple with gold jewelry. Oh, man. Listen. Yeah, nothing brings back the glamour of the 80s, like like poison. Oh, those red carpets. This thing is just magic. Magical, really. Oh my God, in love with the plum, the apoponax, and that tuberose in there. It just, it it's like, you know what? We need a shoulder for this. <laughs> it's like, it's the moment. You know what I mean? It's, it's that moment. It's like, mm. It's like, mm. All right, the next one. Oh, child, this red carpet video. It's, it's sending me places. Okay, number four. And this is also a very special moment uh, to commemorate one of the loves of my life, Vivian Westwood. If you want to be the most sensual creature on that red carpet, you're going to wear Boudoir by Vivian Westwood. Unfortunately, discontinued. But who knows? It might be coming back sooner than you think. Um, Boudoir is um, incredible. And I want to commemorate Vivian Westwood, who unfortunately passed away uh, just a short while ago. But she wore uh, Boudoir. And I know because I met her. And uh, when we met and we worked together in a movie, Art Lovers Unite together. Uh, and uh, I asked her at a certain point, while we were filming, I'm like, Vivian, are you wearing boudoir? And she said, yes, I always wear boudoir. And oh, man, that moment really, it sent me places and it just makes this perfume just that much more special to me. So if you want to be disruptive in, in the best of ways on the red carpet, because she was famous for being like that, if she would be invited to some event, to some fashion show, to some movie premiere, theater event, political event, whatever. And she would be on the red carpet and somebody would try to interview her. She would always push her own agenda. She would always be an activist that she was. And she would always find a way to get her activist message across. And this is the perfume she wore while she was doing all that work. So to me, man, this is gorgeous. This is the perfume that you wear. Uh, if, like Jesus says, if you want to suffocate people in the best of ways. But yes, this is an opulent vanilla, damask rose, tobacco, marigold. Coincidentally, you know, it was advertised as the smell of a po post coital happening. Oh, and I can tell you. It might start off as uh, interesting, dusty bubblegum, but Boudoir is the name. No better name could have been given to this fragrance. It is a Boudoir after a long night of passion. To wear this on the runway, you need both shoulders, you know, you need both shoulders to be bare. Corset to push up the bust. The hair, humongous, you know, big dangly earrings with the with the Vivian Westwood orb. You need to wear Westwood on the red carpet for this perfume. I mean, it's 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 a masterpiece, masterpiece, just divine. Seriously. Number five. Well, what could number five be? Nothing better than Marilyn Monroe. She loved her number five. This is Chanel number no. five's Extra. Uh, number five is number five. 
<laughs> so I highly recommend having the spray version of the extrait that you can put into your little clutch that you're wearing to the red carpet so you can always freshen up. This is very, very potent. A little goes a long way with Chanel Number no. 5, but it gives you confidence on the red carpet. It makes you feel like anything is possible. You're going to win that Oscar if you're wearing this perfume. You know what I mean? Obviously, everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's alleged. You're not going to win an Oscar if you wear this perfume. But you might. What are the chances, right? <laughs> if you're nominated, if you're one of five, well, your chances are one in five. Um, number five. Ah, see what I did there? Awesome. So number five is just a beautiful... Jasmine, May Rose, Ilang Ilang, Patchouli, um, Vanilla. I mean, this thing, well, it used to have civet. It used to have natural musks. Now everything is synthetic. But it, in the pure extrait form, this is a red carpet moment. It gives you makeup vibes. It, it gives you opulence. It gives you gold tones, you know, like literally black and gold. This is what I would wear to the red carpet if I if I wore Chanel number no. five, like black, but then gold jewelry, opulent gold jewelry. Again, a little bit of an 80s uh, moment to go with it. Oh my God, to die for. So that's my number five. Number six is for the playful person that on the red carpet wishes to go bold and deliver a vibe of not caring too much, but caring just enough to show up and be fabulous. And since the Oscars, if we're thinking about the Oscars in particular, uh, the ceremony happens in LA. So I thought to myself, what better fragrance to commemorate the happiness that Hollywood can bring than Giorgio Beverly Hills, especially because the famous... Giorgio Beverly Hills boutique was on Rodeo Drive in the 80s. So we're we're looking at something quintessentially Hollywood-esque, delivering a fragrance, the shoulder pad fragrance of the 80s. And wearing this to the red carpet, you bring sunshine to the red carpet if you wear Giorgio Beverly Hills. Divine, 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 divine. It's a divine gardenia tuberose. Um, it's a white floral. There's jasmine in there as well. Hints of ilang ilang. There's a bit of um, musk in the OG formula. It's been reformulated since. Uh, they had a ton of musk in it. Like people were forbidden from entering certain restaurants when they would wear Giorgio, but they cannot prohibit you to walk the red carpet doused in Giorgio Beverly Hills. Ah, oh, this perfume, it, 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 it makes you feel like a winner. Like I envision wearing completely white clothes on the red carpet for this one. Also shoulder free, uh, white clothes with gold jewelry yellow gold not pale gold. we're talking 80s gold baby and the hair is quaffed for the gods ah wigs allowed mm, divine Giorgio Beverly Hills for the red carpet y you can't make a mistake you're, you're bringing sunshine to the red carpet if you wear this perfume now the next one Another moment in time that has to be captured uh, on film when you're walking the red carpet, uh, for sure. Uh, and that would be envision the 70s, envision the opulence of a perfume launch in the 70s, and then envision Yves Saint Laurent doing it. Well, you've guessed. You're going to have Bianca Jagger walk, coming in on a white horse. You're going to have Grace Jones singing and dancing, zooing it and zipping it and zooing it. You're going to have a party on a boat after 
the red carpet and after the ceremony and everybody who is anybody will be wearing Opium by Yves Saint Laurent. The extra, of course, darling, the extra. We wouldn't want it any other way. Mm. This is the highest form of sophistication on the red carpet. I mean, you wearing opium parfum on the red carpet is like saying, I have arrived. I don't care about any of this because I am fully feeling my oats and I am full. I'm a winner. The, you know, I, the ceremony didn't even begin, but I just, I am so in the moment and I am treasuring every second of it. Of course, I, I would recommend a full on Yves Saint Laurent look and yes, a tailored suit for a woman that's the hottest thing you can wear, really. That is that detached, nonchalant, you know how sexy, inspired by Marlene Dietrich, another icon of Hollywood. Inspired by Marlene Dietrich, the shoulders, the waistline, slightly, you know, loose-fitted at the bottom, then the pants that flow as you walk, and then that stiletto high heel underneath those pants, honey. And the décolleté to the belly button. That's opium on the red carpet. Need I say more? Now, the next one. The next one brings us a memory of more sophisticated, detached class on the red carpet. Something that is inspired by New York, perhaps. Like New York in the 80s. And... It's a more cool New York. Like we're we're almost going into that era of grunge, but we're not there yet. You know, we're still in the mid 80s. Sandy beaches. You know that that type of oh, I've been to Malibu the past 4 days just getting pampered and getting ready at the beach for the Oscar ceremony. And so I wore obsession. You know, and <laughs> this is this is the red carpet moment. Even the current formula is awesome by Cotti. Of course, if you can have the vintage um, kidney bottle, the the pure extra, also amazing. Ah, obsession on the red carpet is going to make you feel like Kate Moss in that ad campaign from the 80s of for obsession this is going to this is going to give you it's going to make you feel light as a feather this is the type of perfume that you wear with an outfit a Calvin Klein outfit <laughs> or a Donna Karen outfit but something like a Donna Karen from the 80s like something you could be, you know, I love how Calvin Klein mixes navy and black. Mm. I know a lot of people say it's taboo. I love mixing navy and black. Coco Chanel also loved, coincidentally, to mix navy and black. But you could also do sandy tones, like sand and white, beige and white, and then put this on, you know. No jewelry, natural nude look. Like you just came from the beach to the red carpet, but with a gorgeous dress, clean and crisp. And just that minimal blush on the cheeks, beigey hues, natural hues, sun-kissed tan, no jewelry. Maybe just one ring, that's all. Because the, all, all the jewelry you need is the obsession and you gotta be obsessed with wanting to win. Uh, it's part of the obsession. So obsession is definitely there on my top 10 to wear on the red carpet. Now, the next one is uh, in memory of somebody very special. And another star, to say the least, another star wore this perfume. And this perfume is so gorgeous that it will, I believe, 
have people asking you at the ceremony, at the red carpet, oh, what perfume are you wearing? Well, haha. And then you're going to have a story to say, oh, I'm wearing, coincidentally, the perfume that Lady Diana wore on her wedding. And that would be Quelques Fleurs by Oubigan. I don't know if it's um, focusing on me or not, but... Uh, oh my gosh, this is the most ambrosial floral accord I have ever smelled. It is just... <clears throat> it's like the nectar of, of, of sunshine and, and meadows and dewy vibes. Um, yes, this is a wedding fragrance usually, but to wear this on the red carpet in memory of Lady Diana is kind of really cool. Especially if somebody then asks you, what are you wearing? You're like, I'm wearing Lady Diana's perfume. That's a conversation starter. You know what I mean? That's a conversation starter. And oh, the opulence of something so sophisticated, elegant, ambrosial. It's like honey. It's like honey, but it's fresh and dewy at the same time. So, so, so beautiful and innocent as well. You know, it's not that corrupted type of Hollywood, you know. Uh, and no, this is more of a youthful, innocent Hollywood. Or maybe the youth before it's corrupted by Hollywood. Just about to be corrupted, <laughs> but not yet. That's Quelque Fleur. Perfect. Perfect for somebody who's just starting out on the red carpet scene uh, to wear Quelque Fleur. Highly recommend this one. Number 10 is a very, very, very special one as well. We're ending this journey on the red carpet with, let me see if anybody guessed in the chats. Mm, I'm reading, reading. No, nobody chat. No, no, nobody guessed. <laughs> well, it's a very conceptual one to end it. And that concept is all about you being fearless. You've worked so hard to get where you are today to be on that red carpet, to be nominated for an award, and you want to just win, okay? And you don't want anybody to intimidate you. You don't want the reporters, the paparazzi to intimidate you, the, the people, you know, interviewing you on the red carpet to intimidate you. You don't want anybody else to intimidate you, your other fellow artists, co-artists, hosts, co-hosts. No, you are a lion, on that red carpet. And so here is a new fragrance, well, relatively new, the newest one of this batch that I've been showing you thus far, released just two years ago. Chanel's Le Lion, Le Lion de Chanel. I'm telling you, this labdanum concoction is the moment. You are that lion on the red carpet. Like, Oh my gosh, this is rich, opulent, Byzantine, Baroque. Uh, it's, it's heavy, but it's also light. It's a roll in the hay. It's this, a person wears this on the red carpet. If they want to tell the world, oh honey, I've paid my dues, okay? I've been around the block a couple of times. I've been on the um uh on the uh what you might call it on the on that seat. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> on the audition seat. Um I've done what I had to do to get here. Uh I ain't no saint and I'm not trying to trick you into believing I am one. Uh, there was a high price to pay to be here, and I paid it. And so what? You can sniff my perfume. <laughs> that's, that's what Le Lion de Chanel is, literally. <laughs> exactly. And then you win a hose car, <laughs> says Jesus. <laughs>
Oh my gosh, divine. I mean, this is labdanum at its finest. There's also incense in here. Hay. Um, it has the aldehydic accord that all Chanel fragrances have, but this one, the labdanum eats up the aldehydes. So what you get is something that is slightly reminiscent of Shalimar, slightly reminiscent of Coromandel, but it's none of those. It's slightly reminiscent of 31 Rue Cambon, slightly reminiscent of Chanel number no. 22, and yet it's a perfume in its own right. It's its own creation. Oh, so, so beautiful. I mean, this is a red carpet moment. This is the richest you could be on the red carpet, like literally the richest, opulence, gold hues, amber hues. This is what you wear if you if you really have nothing more to hide. You know what I mean? And you're just proud of yourself and all your whole achievements to get where you are, where you is today. Uh, that's Lelion de Chanel. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your top 10 in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, well, subscribe and thumb it up. Never give up on love. Bye.